Hello everyone, I'm Ben Coleman, one of your many hosts for the Florida Aviation Network. We're here at the 2018 Reno Air Races in the Valley of Speed, Nevada, and here with a, a gentleman that I know uh, probably all too well, probably more than I really want to know about <laughs> Sean, but Mr. Sean Knickerbocker. Sean? How are you doing, Ben? Doing good. Thank you. I'm doing great. It's great to, it's great to be here. You're, real quick, you're quick with that. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, we, uh, it is good to be here, and it, it's a little bit of a different type of Reno this year, but, uh, but it, it's here, and uh, I, I believe we can bring it back, but it's going to be a lot of work to, to bring it back to the visions that it was with the heavy, the heavy-lunged uh, uh, unlimited class, but the T6 is always stable and a lot of fun. You know a little bit about a T6, don't you? Yeah, I know a little bit about a T6 out here supporting Gene McNeely, Race 90 and 89 Boomer out of uh, Spruce Creek, but uh, flying a T-6 myself over the years, it's, uh, it's a great privilege and an honor to be flying such an airplane. It really is. Sean, if, if I was a kid, or if I had kids, how would I get involved with flying? I mean, I, 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 I've seen it. I, I love to watch airplanes fly over, and I hear a lot about it, but I just don't know how to get started. How do we get started? It's real easy, I'm still a kid. So what, what, what the most, most important thing is, is find a sponsor, find a mentor. Uh, kids that want to be, get involved in certain aspects of their occupation when they grow up, usually get behind somebody and somebody helps them out and guides them through the way. That's what's needed today. And uh, once they get this sponsor or mentor, what, what are they, do they kind of hang out uh, on the couch eating potato chips and playing video games or what should they do with their spare time? contrary no they're going to be out there at the airport working in working in a hangar help me do some oil changes in the stearman or the cub or even uh doing some cleaning on the t6 and then once that's done and they do a little time and are serious about it now kids are going to change their mind but they're initially serious about it we'll put them in the airplane take them a ride you mean you'll put them in your airplane and take them flying yes i will we'll start out in the j3 more than likely depends on the size and it depends on the age of the child but uh, put them in the, in the Super Cub or the J3 and then take them up in the, in the Super Cub on floats and then work their way up into the Stearman, the 985 Stearman. And if they're big enough to go and shoot, we'll put them in the T6. Now you're talking candy. You're talking candy now to a kid that, that has an interest in aviation. And uh, what I'm surprised about is all the little kids that we saw down at the STEM tent, just how kind of enthusiastic they were. They really enjoyed being there. And... Uh, that gives me some hope. The most important thing about this is a mentor and a sponsor is great, but they got to feel it. Looking at books and playing video games about aviation is okay. It gets them in the mindset, but you got to take them out and put them in the air and let them feel it and see what it's all about. Now, flying is a, <clears throat> it's a certain skill and you got to develop it. And there's something else that we're going to need a whole lot more of here soon. And that's, uh, do these airplanes ever break? They do. Mechanics are essential in this whole gear of this thing. So you're going to need a lot of pilots in the next couple of years. You're going to need a lot of mechanics to keep them moving. And that's general aviation mechanics and also commercial mechanics. I tell you, we, uh, it, it's just an open playing field and a smorgasbord right now. If, if I was a kid, which I really still am, I've never grown up, just like you. Uh, but we... It's it's really an opportunity. There's sponsorships, sponsors that are there to uh, to help kids if they really are serious about it. But they got to be serious. They can't just want to do it one day. And for example, uh, Dave, our, our camera guy, give me the finger, Dave. I oh, appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, he soloed at age 14 in the glider, and uh, we know that's and, I, and we want to develop soaring here soon. But if you say, well, that's the target is to solo when you're 14. Don't say sometime during your 14th year of birth. Uh, do it on your 14th birthday. I mean, make that a target. Yeah. Well, what you want to do is go out. and That's one way you can start out. And I highly recommend being a glider pilot first because all your professional military pilots and the test pilot program all became glider pilots to fly the shuttle. Uh, even during World War II, all the Luftwaffe, the German aces, were all glider pilots. All your high, all your talented airline pilots that had a major crisis landing on the Hudson and also the Gimli glider, a 767 that ran out of fuel, were glider pilots. Glider pilots develop a feel for the aircraft and its basic foundation for stick and rudder. And it's a good way to start. 
And uh, another thing for what I enjoy about glider flying is energy management because uh, when you're talking to people that aren't involved with aviation and it's, oh, I'm, I, I could never fly in an aircraft because I'm afraid the engine would quit. What do you do? Well, you're, you're now an aircraft glider. Exactly. It's exactly right, and there's 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 a, there's a real important uh, factor here on on all this. It, it's 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 getting involved, and you must, being me and you, Ben, show the enthusiasm to the children and the kids that want to do this. They must see that sparkle in your eye, and what they have, because the field is wide open, and it's going to get wide open. Now it's going to be wide and open too quick, where we're going to have a big time shortage. And according to Boeing, this past year at AirVenture when I was up there flying the B-17, uh, they're going to be short approximately 790 to 800,000 pilots in the next three years. You want to be a pilot? Go do it. And about 500,000 mechanics, over half a million. And, uh, Sean, the uh, I lost my thought contract there. Hang on just a second. It'll come back to me. Uh, mechanics, pilots, uh, gliders. 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 Working, working on gliders, and, that, and that, that's a real basic foundation. Uh, like I said, uh, glider pilots are such a better style of pilots. Actually, when you start in other aviation aircraft and you start diversifying in seaplanes and gliders, multi-engine, helicopter, you develop a diversion, or a, uh, I don't want to use the word diversion, uh, diversification in skill level. And it really shows. It really shows. Just being a pilot that pushes a bunch of numbers and throws an autopilot on, anybody can do that. That's a pilot. What we want are aviators, and that's the key. And, Sean, we've been beating up uh, on the kids quite a bit about trying to get them to the airport and uh, get involved. But do you realize, and this is, I'm, I'm sure you do, but somebody could be, I'd say, 35 years old and decide that, you know, I'm tired of counting beans. I want to be a pilot. At age 35, what opportunity would they have in this industry? They would have a tremendous opportunity. What happens at age 35 is just like anything else. You go ahead and start your training. It's going to take you two to four years, maybe three to four years. I'm not sure. It depends on how much you want to get involved, how much energy you want to put into it. But I'd say within three to five years of starting flying, you could be flying a right seat on a 777 somewhere. And, you know, a lot of folks that I talk to, again, they say, well, it's too, I'm, I'm too late. It's, I'm too old. And I say, no, you're not. You're, you're only, only too old if you think you are. So we've got to do something to get these guys energized because, believe it or not, we're getting to be the old timers in this yeah, business. Yeah. And uh, we've got to do what we can to, to keep it going. And uh, I intend to be around for at least another 15, 20 years. I hope I am too. Let's see, I'll be 66 in February, so and I'm doing a lot of check rides here. So it is starting to pick up, and I try to do it just part time, but I can do seven days a week, two check rides a day. But at my age, I like to pace it three days a week and fine. Sean, tell me a little bit about your background. What got you started in this industry, and how do you do it? Oh well, first of all, I guess we must be at an airport. They must have started a race. But I grew up in Miami, and I've been around real aviation all my life. My aunt was one trip secretary for 30 years, a Pan American. And I had the privilege when I was about eight years old, ride on the lap in a Boeing 247D with Dick Merle, chief pilot for Eastern Airlines. Mm -hmm. So it exposed a lot. And a lot of people went into the airlines back then. I kind of messed around, went a little way to college, and then went in the military, which I took a back route. And there's numerous routes you can go. There's airline flying, there's commercial flying, there's corporate flying, there's military flying, there's law enforcement flying, EMS, there's bush flying, there's all kinds of flying. All these types of flying are going to need pilots, mm -hmm. and we need to get them in the air. That's what we got to do. You uh, spent some time flying in the sandbox, uh, and you've got, I believe, you have the uh, fortune of flying one of the de Havilland, uh, four-engine de Havilands. That's an antique airplane. That's a de Havilland Dash 7, and it's a great airplane. It, and they, it was an Army aircraft used on the, uh, the 204th MI Battalion out of Fort Bliss, Texas. We were the only contractors that flew the airplane. And the airplane was an EO-5C, that's what they called it. It was ISR, Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance. And we flew that over in Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, starting in 2004, and then I flew a UV-18, which is a twin otter. 
and then the BE 200s and 300s and C12s and 350s and caravans. So we had a we did a lot of diversification, and there's a perfect example of diversification. The money was good, but it's just another unique type of flying. So it's available. Sean, what do you do about helicopters? Well, I did a little helicopters. I'm an army guy. I was an Army helicopter pilot in the uh, first 17th Cav at the 92nd Airborne in uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Aero Scouts, and became an instructor pilot. Then got out and uh, got a job with the Department of Defense for about a year and then moved over to U.S. Customs and retired in 2004 after a great career with U.S. Customs flying Blackhawks and Bells and McDonnell Douglases and Aerospatials and everything in between. And uh, you hold the, uh, uh, the record of being a... Uh Blackhawk instructors, if I'm not correct, uh, actually a Czech airman. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm one of, actually it was one of two, but I was the most active UH-60 Blackhawk examiner the FAA has. So I issued most all the type ratings to all the civilian operators that are out west in California fighting fires right now. If you see a UH-60 on there, I more likely issue their type rating. So those guys have come up the ranks, and again, diversification, diversification. And uh, some of these aircraft that you've spouted off here, uh, Dave, he's also not only the cameraman, but he's also the producer. And I'm sure he's going to drop in uh, a little uh, Sikorsky uh, S60 behind us, a Blackhawk, Pavehawk, and uh, maybe even drop in a Dash uh, Dash 7 to show in uh, what it's looked like. Because, you know, we sit here, we talk, you look like just kind of a normal guy. Uh, but you, there's a lot There's a lot going on behind those uh, behind those Foster Grants. I'm sorry, those are Ray-Bans. Ray right behind his Ray-Bans. <laughs> and... Uh, and it's and, and also I believe you just became a uh, quiet bird man. Yes, after two and a half years, I'm I passed the test. I met the deed. I accomplished the route, and I would could not fail or save my. <laughs> so I knew the song too. The uh, but John uh, being a quiet bird man, it is a quiet. It's a very esoteric uh, society. But you are the epitome of a good quiet bird man because. People don't go thumping themselves around on the chest like a big gorilla saying, look at me. Uh, you've accomplished a hell of a lot in your career, but uh, I don't think you're finished. I hope not. I'm still doing it, and I enjoy it. And I, those are nice, kind words. And it's like everybody else in the QBs and, and in aviation in general. Aviation is a small circle, and you don't know who's going to be your boss in five years. So always, always do the best of your ability and be a team player and you'll go far. And uh, you see an old man or an old woman in a wheelchair uh, struggling to do something, help them. Because uh, those folks probably in their younger days were the ones up there flying around this heavy iron and uh, protecting our safety and our freedom uh, to be Americans and the right to bear arms. And oh, I'm not going to get political on this. It's not, let's not get in politics now. <laughs> Even though a good friend of mine flies for, he's flown for Trump for 15 years. Uh, John Stanton, and he's flown the 757 for him. So I have, a, I have a little in on that. I always talk to him periodically. But overall, it's the most important thing in aviation is we need pilots, and we got a good, good quality pilots. But to take it further, we need aviators. And if you're a good aviator, your future is wide open. You never work a day in your life if you get involved in aviation and love it. And that's why uh, I think we're sitting here. Make a make a hobby into employment, and it's been a hobby all my life. Well, Sean, uh, we've been kind of kicking this around, and I want to make sure that we capture this uh, for the Florida Aviation Network and Obi Young and all of his his cadre of volunteers. But uh, we're putting together a program of flight line etiquette for kids, and uh, Brad Fuller is a good friend of yours, Mike Fuller, the Fuller family, and. Uh, We've got a lot of work to do, but uh, I think that you're going to be behind it, at least donating some time and effort. And uh, we're, we're always looking for uh, a handout, sponsorship. If somebody wants to help out, we'll, we'll do it. Well, Plane Time is another thing that we're, we're reviving, the uh, show that I founded, uh, kind of a, similar to this, kind of a sit-down-and-talk show exactly uh, to share information and just have a – and not do it in a stuffy format. Uh, we, we make mistakes. We all do. But you learn from it and you push through it. Just like flying an airplane, you're gonna you're gonna do some uh, switchology problems, mm -hmm. but you got to work through it, and uh, you learn better. Yeah, one of the thing I was gonna say is uh, when we talk about getting this thing moving, uh, I would like to make an offer that uh, if we get about 10 kids and come out to my place and give them some basic foundation, 
bring some hot dogs, they can swim in the pool, and then we can give them a little orientation flight in the Cubs. Mm -hmm. We got three Cubs out there. We got 985 Stearman and even got the T6. Whether we have something they can look forward to, give them first baby meeting, come out and talk to them about aviation, walk around the airplane, explain things. We don't have to have a classroom environment, but just walk around the aircraft and say what this is, what that is, and how the flight controls work. And then get in there and give them a little ride around the patch. Mm -hmm. Out in the grass field, 4,000 foot of grass, 300 feet wide, we can land anywhere. Sean, I'm excited about it, and uh, I think we're going to make something happen. But anything else you'd like to share other than get back to the uh, socialization here at uh, Reno? Well, no, it's just a great honor to be uh, interviewed with Ben here and, and participating in this program. And hopefully something will happen and we'll get going, and I'm uh, here to volunteer and help out as best I can. I know you will. Sean, thank you so much. Thank you, Ben. Always, always. And uh, uh, we're going to wrap this one up, and uh, we're going to see who else we can find around here that we can – the shakers and movers of aviation that can uh, can bring some more talent into this business to fill the voids of the talents when we start uh, sitting around watching other people fly airplanes other than us do it ourselves. But anyway, we're going to sign off this time. Thank you, Dave, for your hard work back there. And uh, Ben Coleman, Florida Aviation Network, see you next interview.